Hello friends, welcome to Robert's Holiday Table. Today we're gonna to make pumpkin molasses cake. These are some little mini bun cakes that I've made here, with a little powdered sugar on the top. You can see it kind of looks like a castle um, or a cathedral. I'll show you how to do this a little bit later. But first, I'm gonna show you some exciting place settings for all the holidays. Let me set this down right here. And then first we're gonna go here to what I call this setting. This is our elegant Thanksgiving. You can see here, Judy's coming. Here's our name tag, salt and pepper shaker there. This is our bread plate, which kind of goes up here. This is our dinner plate. I have a salad plate here, dinner plate. There we are. Okay. And we have a nice white wine glass here with leaves on it. The leaves match this napkin really well. So I like this as the elegant Thanksgiving setting. All right, we're gonna move over here to family Thanksgiving setting. You can see it's all pear themed. Uh, here's the pear salt and pepper shaker, place for our name tag there. Judy's gonna come over to this one too. Judy likes to come to our place. There we go, there's Judy. And you can see our salad plate there with the pears and the grapes. We've got a gold charger here, kind of give it a little sparkle. Traditional green plates. There we are. This is our white wine, our red wine, and our water glass there. We're gonna move away across the table now to Christmas. This is what I call Christmas sparkle here. Humphrey's coming to see us, and we have salt and pepper shaker. Humphrey's, oh, he's gonna stand up. Okay, salt and pepper shaker there for Humphrey. All right, we have our water glass. I love this water glass because you can use it for water or iced tea, whatnot. This is our white wine glass. We have a little gold sparkle. So you see there, this looks really cool. And then of course our red wine glass. This pattern here is from Hemphill Wells. It's an old Southern department store. And I love this pattern. I love the napkins. There's a runner that goes with it. There's also a cardinal here bringing a little cheer goes here with all this and then just for some extra fun our bread plate we have a snowman here and the snowman has a little dog isn't that great there we go so that's our festive christmas setting now we're going to move to new year's real quick it's all silver and gold now the charger here under this light looks gold but i'm going to show you it's actually silver so we're doing that silver there we have an antique plate here, silver leaf. And our salad plate, we're going a little modern here. It's sort of a pear shaped from Barnes and, I mean, from Pottery Barn there. Putting that right there. Adding to the sparkle, we have the bread plate, which is gold. It also has a little mother of pearl there. It matches the gold in the napkin, and the napkin matches the candle, you can see the candle here. We'll go a little burgundy to add some sparkle there. All right. And then we have our name tag here. So who's coming? Oh, Humphrey's coming over here. There we go. <laughs> and he has his own salt and pepper shaker there too. We've, um, we haven't put out the flute for the, uh, for the champagne, but that's something that you could add. Ran a little sparkle here, little memories, Harris Ranch. I always like to put something on the table that brings back memories. Here's a little crown that we got in England. And then cheers. It's going to be 2021. 2021. So there's that. And you have your water glass here. You know, for New Year's, the water glass might as well be a bar glass. So that's why we have a bar glass for the water glass. Your red wine, your white wine. And there we go. Now we're going to go into the kitchen and we are going to make that pumpkin molasses cake. So y'all ready? All right, I'm going to grab this. So we have a little reference here. Okay. Set this right here. I'm going to show you the pattern that I used yesterday to make those samples. So what I'm saying here is look at this cathedral. Isn't that cool? I love this one. William Sonoma many years ago. But today, we are going to use the rose pattern, and it's just as lovely. It comes out very nicely, too. There's the rose pattern there. Okay, so let's all jump on over to the recipe. 
we are using the old fashioned Betty Crocker recipe for pumpkin molasses cake, but I'm gonna tell you what, I'm gonna add a little extra pizzazz and stuff that I know works really well. So, first thing is we have to combine our dry ingredients. But we're gonna go with two and a half cups of flour. Now, about a third of this is actually whole wheat flour. I always actually like to make it a little healthy, plus the whole wheat gives it um, a really nice flavor. Uh, more down home and earthy, I would think. We're gonna add our orange peel. You see here, it's a little red there. This is actually um, a blood orange peel. Put that in there. Next, we have our baking soda, of course. So it'll rise nicely. So our baking soda is going right in there, combining this. Okay. Got that in there. Next, we have the salt. Boom. All right, salt goes right in. How easy is that? <laughs> you know who says that? That's, that's Ina, my girlfriend. <laughs> um, salt, and then we have cinnamon. Now, this cinnamon is the best cinnamon ever. It's uh, Makara cinnamon. I'm gonna show you the bottle here. If you're gonna use cinnamon, you gotta get this one, Makara. It is the best. Delicious. Okay. Hold it still. Oh, hold it still. Hold, hold it still. All right. There's that. Then we're going to go with our ginger. Here's our ginger, ground ginger. Beautiful. Putting that in. Okay. And next, we're going to add, this is a little Robert uh, extra. This is nutritional yeast. It's not the yeast that's going to make it rise, but it's the yeast that's going to give it a delicious flavor, very savory flavor. So we're going to add that in there too. Okay. So we've got all this in there, got all of our dry ingredients in there, and we're going to stir it, combine it pretty nicely here. Make sure that orange peel gets mixed in, you know, it doesn't stick together. Got all that in there. All right. That's looking pretty good. Okay, next we're going to do is we're gonna add brown sugar. We're gonna first beat the, beat the butter and we add brown sugar, but we're not really gonna do brown sugar. We're gonna do something different. First, let's do the, the butter. Got the butter in there, delicious. I like to use unsalted butter, just a personal preference. Might as well make it healthy. You don't need the salt. To make it rise you already have enough salt so here we go here's the butter we're going to hit turn on the beater i'm going to beat it now all right for 30 seconds there we go okay now it says to add the brown sugar to this but i'm not using brown sugar i don't like it it cakes too much i don't i don't care for it so we're gonna go with some honey here and one more thing. So we have this Central Coast honey that we bought on our last wine tasting tour. We did a honey tasting tour. If you haven't done a honey tasting tour, I highly recommend it. So we're gonna go with honey in here. I'm trying to do this with the camera here. Get it with the spatula. There we go. Woo, it's delicious. I know. Good thing the dogs are put away. They would be trying to get this honey right now. I'll tell you, they're a couple of bears, those dogs. <laughs> put that in there like that. All right. Now, got the honey. Now, here's the other thing. What I'm, you know, brown sugar, caramel, what's the difference? I've melted this caramel. I'm going to go ahead and put it in there. Like this. And I think that's going to turn out much better than just brown sugar that gets too hard, flaky. Might as well just do it this way. I mean, after all, what is caramel? That's brown sugar, right? And butter. Okay, so now we're gonna beat that again. Beat, beat, beat. There we go. Okay. Now, there we go. We're, we're doing that for 30 seconds. All right, and I'm making sure that butter gets down in there. Now we're gonna add the eggs one at a time. So, second here, here's the first egg. 
Now, if you don't want to use eggs, if you're vegan, you can do aquafaba, or you can make an egg out of flaxseed too. Um, that's a special chore that I can teach you guys some other time. Stirring that egg in there. Yeah, oh, sorry, get my, move my arm. There you go. There's the first egg, okay? And this is a brown egg. Um, I like the, I don't know what the difference, but I know these are cage-free eggs. So, there we go. Now we're gonna mix that in. A little bit more. Okay, that's well combined. All right, so next, usually I don't stop in between and do all this, but I usually just keep on going. So next we're gonna add, we have to combine these things here. This is my, the pumpkin. I'm gonna put the pumpkin in the bowl. We need to combine this. All right, and this is our molasses, which is not actually molasses. So I'm doing something special here. I'm using yacon syrup. Yacon syrup is so much better for you. It tastes just like molasses. It's wonderful for your body. Where can you find it? And yacon syrup you can get at Whole Foods or you can get at Trader Joe's. And spell it. Um, it is Y-A-C-O-N, yacon syrup. You could also probably get it at Sprouts. So I put that in there. So it's not real molasses. So we're cutting down on the sugar and we're adding some healthy enzymes also to our body. Our buttermilk here, putting that in. And this, just as a little Robert touch, we're gonna add some sour cream. I love sour cream. It makes everything taste better, makes food come out better. So we're gonna put in some sour cream there. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. All right. There we go. Now, let's stir this. Maybe we can just do it with a spatula here. Uh, photographer, hand me that little spatula right there. Thank you. I think I'm going to do this real quick like this. Just to make it a little more combined. All right. Now, got this going. Okay. All right, so we're gonna be adding these ingredients alternately to this mixture here with the eggs. So first thing is, let's add a little bit of the flour. Okay, we're gonna add about half of the flour mixture. I'm gonna combine it. Turn it on. You're wanting each ingredient to do its magic of whatever it's doing. So that's why you're kind of going a little bit slowly here. Now we're gonna add a little bit of the pumpkin mixture with the sour cream and the butter, milk. There we go. See that's getting really nicely there. Getting very nice. Oh shadows okay all right okay add a little bit more of the flour I think I'm just gonna add the rest of it there there you go Add all the flour there let's combine that it's getting a really nice texture it's really looking very nice mmm this is when people want to come and lick the batter, beater, the beater batter. But we're not going to let them. No, no. I say nay, nay. <laughs> All right. And then lastly, you're going to add the rest of this pumpkin mixture in there. Mmm. I want to get all of it in there. I see some, some of my sour cream. Whoops. Some of my sour cream is in there. Try to get it all in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's going to be really, really good. Delicious. Okay. Now, put this on. Okay. It's mixing pretty good. Now, here's a safety thing. I'm going to tell you all something safety. I know this is tempting to go in and do the sides while it's beating. Don't do that. 
you could lose a finger. Just take the time, turn it off, turn it off, scrape the sides like that, get it all in there. Ooh, that is looking so nice and thick and rich. This is gonna be better than the first one, I think. All right. Oh, that smells so heavenly. There we go. All right. Let's turn it back on real quick. Okay. Now, one last little trick, my trick. I want to get this pumpkin pie spice right there. And we're just going to put a dash in there just for the sake of the season, right? Just for the sake of the season. There it goes. Now, the thing is with your batter, you don't you don't want to get it too mixed, right? If you get it too mixed, it starts to become liquid. And then it doesn't do right. It doesn't it doesn't rise like you want it to rise. It doesn't do what you want it to do. So we're just get, we got it here. I think we got it. There we go. Okay. Yeah. I'm just gonna scrape it a little bit. There we go. Okay. Some dishes here. All right, so now I'm going to take it off, pop it off like that. There you go. I want to make sure that I clean this thing as we go, too. I don't want that falling down. Okay, so what are we going to do next? Now we're going to take this rose pattern here. I've already um, pre greased the pan, and I don't mean real grease. What did you use? I used Pam and I used flour. See there, start in the middle and it will naturally flow out. You start in the middle, it'll naturally flow out to the sides. You don't wanna go in through the sides because that, oh, it's so fluffy. This is the best batter I think I've tried here. All right. So I hope that this has been helpful. I'd love to show my little tricks there. If you, if you like pecans uh, or walnuts, you can add them now into the middle. That's what I like to do. You might want to toast them first and chop them fine. You could do that. Uh, this is where I would do that. We're not gonna do that today, but this is where I would do it. And I, I don't like it mixed into the batter. I kind of like it as a little surprise in the middle. And this is the time to do it. There we go. And at the end, you know, when they all pop out, you can put the powdered sugar on there, make it look like snow if you want to, or you can make a, a glaze too. You can make some kind of a glaze, which would be really nice to do too, if you want to do a glaze. Uh, you could do a brown, you could make a, a nice maple glaze would be very lovely with this. If you wanted to make this semi-healthy, maybe if you're doing it for breakfast, as a breakfast food, you could actually um, do some cool things here. You could add some ground oats in here and make it a healthy breakfast morning thing too. I wouldn't add a lot, maybe a half a cup uh, to that ground oats. And I can tell you it would turn out really delicious. I've done that before for breakfast. People like it, then you can call it healthy. <laughs> <laughs> and the pecans are good and really nice. Another nice thing you can add too is um, believe it or not, macadamia nuts. And what I would do with the macadamia nuts, of course, grind them up a little bit, and that would be absolutely delicious if you did that. Now, I like to get everything in the bowl, so just bear with me here. Let me get the last bit of this all in there. Okay. This guy's a little bit lower than the other guys. There we go. All right, looks like we're pretty much ready to go. I like to make sure I get it evened out. This is gonna rise, but I do like to give everybody the same start. Call it even start. Okay. All right, voila, I think we're done. So, I like to do that. Now it'll naturally smooth out by itself. But here we go, our rose pattern, pumpkin molasses cakes that we're going to become famous neighbors and friends with. Going right into the oven, right in there. 
It's gonna be 350 for 30 minutes. 350 for 30 minutes. Um, of course, you can check it with a toothpick, toothpick after 30 minutes. And you wanna let it cool. Don't pop it up too soon. Let it cool off and then turn it upside down. And I always turn it upside down on a platter like this one here. This platter, I usually put paper towels down, pop it down there like that in case there's any residual moisture. And that's pretty much it. And they come so, out looking like the ones you showed us. And they will come out looking like this. They'll have a rose pattern instead, but they'll come out looking like that. You can wrap these on little decorative plates, even if they're disposable plates, with some really nice um, wax paper or something or with a bow. You can glaze them. And glaze them, take them to the neighbors. You can put nuts on the top. You could put candy pears on the top. I've done that before. And make sure you take it to the neighbor real fast if you do that because they're gonna get soggy. But that's what we do here at Holiday House. And I wanna thank you so much for joining me for the holidays. I hope everybody has a wonderful Thanksgiving and a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Bye everybody. Thanks, Robert. Thank you. <laughs>